Hi, I'm Rolf Kersus. I'm going to do another one of these Accenta High Availability Cluster Failovers. Test. And this time, I'm going to fail over by pulling out the network cable. I've got my high availability cluster here with two C240 servers and uh, a shelf of two and a half inch drives with a couple of S-Tech SSDs and a shelf of three and a half inch drives with a couple of Zeus RAMs. Uh, over here on my right, I've got a Cisco UCS that I've got some virtual machines running idle meter on uh, that have hooked up to a couple Nexus 5500 switches. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is do a very similar setup to before, where we can see that this time we've got the uh, shared virt virtual IP address of 12.124.12.204, uh, which is now available on the top box, HAA. So I'm going to start the IOMeter test. It's a 180 second test here that I'm going to run. Uh, let's make sure that we got that running. And that is in progress. We've got a ping that's in progress. Uh, let me just start this over so I have a more accurate ping count. Um, I've got the... And we're on 114, which is not the one that we're going to pull the network cable on. So, now that we've got things off and running, let me go around and pull the network cable. And, uh, and this time, I'm going to turn my PC around so that my Mac around so that we can see that the network cable, well, we can see how fast it fails over basically. Okay, so here we are back looking at the screen again. And what I'm going to do, we're running on the top one, so I'm going to pull the two 10 gig interfaces uh, off the top one. And um, uh, let me pull one of them and see what happens just for the heck of it. So these are the SAS interfaces, these are the 10 gig interfaces right here. Let me pull one of them and see what is going on. Hmm. I might pull the SAS cable by mistake. At this rate. Uh oh. Didn't think it'd be so difficult. I think I'm going to undo the PCI interface before this. 10 gig cable. All right, so I pulled one of the 10 gig cables, and that really didn't do much, did it? Uh, so I really got to get this other one out, and it's being a little bit stubborn. So I have to do this test on the other one. There we go. Man, those are really designed to stay in there. So uh, yeah, all right. Now we've got the timeouts, as we'd expect. Hmm, I'm not sure we're going to get this done in time here. That's all right. At least we'll see if things come back up, and uh, we'll definitely see how it went down on the IO meter. Okay, so obviously this thing is unavailable. So we're doing a failover here, and bam, it shows us back up. Wow, network failover didn't take very long at all. Um, that's interesting. I expected it to take longer. Okay, yeah, we're still running and test time elapsed and this is a lot quicker than the SAS failover over or the power failover. I wonder why the power failover didn't take that long with the network. Anyway, we're back up and running and uh, let's see what that looks like. We're almost done here with the ammeter test. Heck, as long as we got time, I'm going to plug these network cables back in. I doubt that will make a difference and come back up. So, we're still running, waiting for the generation to finish. And does it show that we're back up? Oh, it shows our network is back up. Man, that network fail back is quick. So, let's see what the results look like here. There it's complete. And... Um, obviously the average IOPS is no good. What we're interested in is the NFS graph. Uh, the NFS graph came bent down and back up. That looks like very much like a manual failover graph that we did earlier. And the same thing on the iSCSI. So that was a much quicker failover than the SAS cable being yanked out. Anyway, that's another successful test.